Today, I want to clear up some of the misconceptions behind the megometer or megometer, as some people prefer to call it. Now, the idea behind this tool is great, where we send a high amount of voltage through the windings and we're checking the insulation on the windings to ground. They're originally designed for open style motors, but what most people in the field are using them are to check the insulation of compressors, which has an environment of refrigerant and refrigerant oils. And that's going to be a key part of how this works. But if we look at this, it goes down to 20 megohms. At 20 megohms, it says it's a bad motor. If we look at the Copeland website on their AE Bulletin 1294, it says a compressor can be as low as 0.5 megohms and still be perfectly good. It can be from the factory at 0.5 megohms and have absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. So if we're checking a scroll compressor and we're seeing that it's at bad at 20 megohms, but really it's still good at 0.5 megohms, that means a lot of compressors have been condemned with absolutely nothing wrong with them whatsoever. And a lot of people like that because they can sell a lot of compressors. It says bad, give me money, replace system. But unfortunately, it means that a lot of good compressors that are still running are being replaced and it's costing customers a lot of money. Now, the other thing about this is this is in an environment of refrigerant and refrigerant oils. Now, if you're going to use a megometer, make sure you never use it in a vacuum of any kind, but preferably use one of the digital readout and one where you can adjust the voltage going in. So you're not over volting the motor going into that. From there, we can use a pattern of checking over time where we're doing maintenance checks. We can check it every three months, every six months, twice a year, whatever it takes. And then we have a pattern. And then as we're watching that pattern, we may see that one time the resistance drops. We have a much lower resistance. At that point, we would do an acid or moisture test. And we a lot of times see that there's acid or moisture contaminations inside that refrigeration cycle. And we need to do a cleanup process. We put filter drives in there, we clean it up. And the reason is there's a plug, a fuse like connection that goes from the wires of the outside of this motor through the case to the wires on the inside. And even though there's insulation on the windings here, where the plug is, it's going to be an exposed connection as well as our thermal overload is going to be an exposed connection to the environment. So if we have moisture and acid, it can actually give refrigerant a better path from those connections to the metal casing. And the meter could show that we have too low of an ohm reading. And the problem is not the motor itself, but just simply the contamination. Once we solve the contamination issue, we find that the motor is running perfectly, perfectly fine. So these really shouldn't be used to condemn any motor, but over a period of time of checking them with a more accurate digital readout that we can inspect and monitor. Now, my personal experience is I had a customer many, many years ago. It was the springtime. I used to ohm out every single compressor and it said it was bad. And so what I told the customer that the compressor is still running, but it's showing bad. We probably have the insulation breaking down. Let's go ahead and replace it before summer gets here. And she agreed. She put an entirely new system in, but I was curious of what made that compressor go bad. So I brought it back home and then I pulled a good vacuum, charged it with brand new refrigerant, started doing tests on it. And the compressor ran perfectly great. So I re-ohmed it again and found out that it was ohming good. What I didn't understand back then was the contamination issue was one of the things causing that. Now that was a reciprocating compressor. It wasn't a scroll like this one, but really it was just simply the contamination in the refrigerant that gave that false signal. And I feel horrible still to this day that I had that customer replace that entire system when there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. From then I started monitoring more closely what was going on. And I found out many times compressors would show bad and they ran for many, many, many years without a problem. And that's because the meter here doesn't go to a low enough mega ohms reading to show that the compressor is actually bad. So a scroll compressor can be at 0.5. This is showing it's bad at 20 and it's really just an issue of accuracy. So I know a lot of people like to use these to be able to sell units and hey, that's on you, that's your choice. There's no HVAC police, but hopefully everybody at least understands the difference and you can make a conscious decision of what you're gonna do. And if you look at Emerson, it's Emerson Applications Engineer, AE Bulletin number 1294 has all this information I talked about in much more detail, as well as a how-to for megging a system out. And it talks about making sure we never do it in a vacuum, how we adjust and how we check to see what the resistance should be. So you can look that up and instead of taking my word for it, go straight from the manufacturer and, and see what they have to say. And the biggest thing is never stop learning.